And then my favorite, not just end ineffective strategies, we've been talking about that for years, courageously end ineffective teaching strategies. But see, sometimes we just have to be honest with ourselves, and that's tough to do sometimes. But you have to agree, historically, let's go back a few decades ago, if we had 30 students, and we were going to teach these students how to swim, not a one of them has ever swam in their life, we're going to teach them how to swim. So we take them to the pool, and we push them all in the water. Some of you learned to swim like that, didn't you? And we're sitting there, you didn't, you're not motivated enough. That's your problem. And you didn't look at those PowerPoints I gave you. Did you not read the homework I told you to read last night? And lo and behold, let's say 15 of them actually swim to the side of the pool and exit. Tell the truth now. We'd hang our hat on those 15. Look at here, what a wonderful job of teaching. I did. I got 15 students learning how to swim. Never swam before in their life. What a great job I did. Not once with the old paradigm would we look back at the bottom of the pool and think, is that something we could have done for those 15? You, you think maybe we could change our strategy a little bit, maybe got some more to learn how to swim? And, of course, it's a rhetorical question. You're not dealing with students physically incapable of swimming. It may require you getting in the water with them. It may require you to get a little wet, maybe a little cold. Yes, you may have to hold their hand through the first few motions. You may have to get them used to an environment they've never been in before. But absolutely we can get all of them to swim, and that's what a learning-centered college is all about. It's about the learning, not how we get there, how we get them to learn. Not a student is mentally or physically incapable of swimming, and not any of our students are mentally incapable of learning either. So we knew at Wallace Community College, we continued with the least effective teaching strategies. That would have to be one of the most destructively discriminatory practices going on in this country today for a reason. It hinders upward mobility for those that need it the most. And that's the one thing, just like the president said, education can compensate for a lot of ills in society, but only if we close those gaps. We like to look at number one. If there's a problem, we go to the number one problem. You know, it's like pulling the weed up by the root. You take care of the number one problem, it'll usually take care of a lot of those other problems that were out there. So we just simply say, well, what's the least effective, the very least effective way to present information? Straightforward lecture. Okay, well, then we need to minimize that. What's the best way? Active learning. We need to maximize that. Very simple approach. So that was our challenge. How do we minimize the lecture? and maximize all those where we get maximum retention in the classroom. Different triangles, they all say the same thing, but it sometimes gives us different ideas on what strategies we can use to get them more involved in the learning process. Critical thinking number one, of course, that's a prerequisite to problem solving. Do you know when they polled the state of California, 90, over 90% 90 of professors said that critical thinking was absolutely one of the top skills required for students. Not a surprise. The surprise was less than 10% could even tell you how they purposely implemented that in their classroom. I guess one of those things we expected students to come with. You know, but in today's time where so much of that observation, first step of critical thinking, had been taken away from us. I knew that when I was driving from the airport the day before yesterday. I didn't have to look at any road signs, exit, I just waited until the lady said turn right, I turned right. She said turn left, I turned left. It took away all the observations. So we have a challenge today. There's a reason they may not be as good at critical thinking. And what my, rhyme, my wife reminds me of constantly, just Google it. Every time I ask a question, she reminds me, just Google it. When I Googled active learning, one of the one, first ones I saw, 228 strategies. I'm thinking, good gracious, alive, 228. Maybe I can find a couple that fit for me. But what it really was is a compilation of several articles. They just put into one, make it easy access. The problem we had with holistic approach, with multiple strategies, we didn't have anything to compare to. We couldn't find any research. On, we could find it on the individual strategies until we saw this one on California State University. Their large minority population is Latino. Watch what happened when there's zero high-impact strategies used. There's a 45% greater chance of completion for the non-Latinos. Not a surprise. Just one high-impact strategy lowers that number to 29%. Two high-impact strategies is down to 5%. The gap's almost completely closed. And by the time they reach three or more, it is not only completely closed, the Latino has exceeded the non-Latinos. We're back to our statement. We're not dealing with students that are mentally incapable of learning, but they have their challenges and they have their issues. Reclaiming American Dream Report re-emphasized the mission. Our mission is not just to educate the best students. Anybody can do that. Our mission is to serve a high-quality education to millions of often underserved students. That's where the challenge comes. And the Lumina Foundation pumps millions of dollars into innovation, community college, trying to get things started. They say learning doesn't just matter. It matters most of all. And you can see their frustration. 
Because I've never seen the word stupid used in a quote until I saw Lumina Foundation. It's about the learning. They're trying to emphasize it's about the learning. It's not about the grades. It's not about all these other things. It's about the learning. That's why we changed our mission statement to Wallace Community College. I'm sorry, it just got changed. I don't care what it says. I just wanted to say inspire and facilitate learning. As long as it has those words, because that's our mission. You ever had anybody tell you anybody can teach? <laughs> don't you just want to hit them right in the mouth? Well, anybody can teach. Are you kidding me? What they mean is anybody can get up and talk about what they're good at. Well, I agree with that or what they're knowledgeable on. Can anybody inspire and facilitate learning? And then let's throw that next part on. With a diverse group of students. No, that takes a professional educator. It takes someone committed to constant and never-ending improvement. Because, see, we started out teacher-centered a while back. We, it was all straight lecture. There passive learning going on. And then we said, well, we need to incorporate the learners in this. Make it learning-centered. And then we realized, no, it's learning-centered. The students are learning, and we're learning. And that's the way it should work. 